Buffalo Bills. Last year, I was really high on the Buffalo Bills. I had the Buffalo Bills as my biggest sleeper team heading into the 2019 NFL season, and it didn't disappoint me. And in the offseason around this time, when I said that, a lot of people were calling me crazy, said I didn't know what I was talking about, saying that I was overrating the Buffalo Bills, and lo and behold, the Buffalo Bills end up living up to my expectations and making it to the playoffs. Now the question is, what is next for the Buffalo Bills? What is the level of expectation for the Bills heading into 2020? And the expectation should be to make a deep playoff run. They have a good enough roster to do so. And I think they are a little bit of a sleeper when it comes to the AFC Conference Championship picture. And a lot of people give Josh Allen a lot of hate. And a lot of Buffalo Bills fans, you know, try to figure out why does Josh Allen get so much hate. Now, I believe that the reason why Josh Allen gets a lot of hate is because, you know, he doesn't throw the football for, you know, like 300, 400 yards every single game and things like that. But also the fact that he plays for the Buffalo Bills. And as a Buffalo Bills fan, you may want to be like, JT, what's wrong playing with, for the Buffalo Bills? It's nothing wrong playing with, for the Buffalo Bills. But in the media's perspective, the Buffalo Bills are small, are a small market team and when you're a small market team you don't really get a lot of attention so a lot of people didn't really get the opportunity to see josh allen play until they had that primetime game versus pittsburgh and that primetime thanksgiving game when they put a butt whooping on the dallas cowgirls so a lot of people didn't really get to see you know how good of a quarterback josh allen really is and Josh Allen is still a work in progress. He still has a lot of room to improve. But Josh Allen, you know, he's good enough to, you know, win games in the playoffs. And I something that had really took me by surprise with Josh Allen is how athletic he is. Like, Josh Allen coming out of Wyoming, I didn't know he had this kind of athleticism. Who would have thought that him and Lamar Jackson would be two of the most electric quarterbacks in the NFL when it comes to running the football? Like, Josh Allen is a highlight reel waiting to happen anytime he tucks the ball. Like, I don't know about you guys or anybody else, but I like watching Josh Allen plays. Like, Josh Allen is really electric when it comes to running the football. And, like, he has his unique running style. Like, Lamar Jackson is more finesse, make you miss with spin moves and things like that. But Josh Allen is the guy who would just flat out run you over. And me, I enjoy watching Josh Allen play. Now, I think another reason why Josh Allen, you know, isn't, you know, lighting up the stat sheet or anything like that is because I think that the Buffalo Bills have kind of put the training wheels on Josh Allen. And I think going into year three, I think we can expect a little bit more out of Josh Allen because I feel like the Buffalo Bills sometimes last season, they played it a little bit too safe with Josh Allen, which I don't have nothing wrong with that because, you know, do what you got to do to win games. But eventually, it's going to be some games that Josh Allen is going to have to take over. And he is going to have some games that he's going to have to throw for, you know, maybe 300, 400 yards. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. Now, you know, it hasn't happened yet, but eventually... They're going to have to put a lot of faith in Josh Allen. And really, Josh Allen was really, you know, I would consider Josh Allen's last season in 2019, basically his first full season in the NFL. Because I know he played as a rookie and things like that, but he missed a lot of time during his rookie season due to injuries. So last year was really his first full year as a full-time NFL starter. So now he's going into pretty much year two of being a full-time starter in the NFL. I think we're going to see Josh Allen improve a lot. And I mean, a lot of people, you know, like to disrespect, you know, Josh Allen. But I think a large reason why people disrespect Josh Allen is because he plays for the Buffalo Bills. Like I said earlier, there's nothing wrong with Buffalo Nothing wrong with the city, nothing wrong with the Bills. It's just that the media has, you know, this kind of stigma that, you know, they don't really pay attention to small market teams like Buffalo. So people don't really get the opportunity a lot to see Josh Allen play in action. Now, this Buffalo Bills defense probably could be the best defense in football. Now, you have Mario Addison this past offseason free agency from the Carolina Panthers, and he's going to give you a pretty good 
lift when it comes to the pass rushing department, which was something that Buffalo really struggled in at times. You also have, you know, Vernon Butler up front. You got Ed Oliver. You also got A.J. Klein. You got Jerry Hughes. You got rookie A.J. Epinesa out of um, Iowa, who I felt, you know, should have won the first round. But, you know, everybody only cares about how fast of a 40 time you run and how much you bench press and things like that. But I believe that A.J. Epinesa is going to be a really good player for the Buffalo Bills. I think he fits in perfectly with what the Buffalo Bills have. And then you also have Tremaine Edmonds. Now, I think Tremaine Edmonds could be a dark horse sleeper for a defensive player of the year this year. I think Tremaine Edmonds... It's being really slept on by a lot of people. I think Tremaine Edmonds could potentially be one of the best linebackers in the NFL by the end of the 2020 NFL season. You also got Matt Milano, who a lot of Buffalo Bills fans were a little bit critical of last season at certain moments, especially that, you know, Houston Texans game when, you know, he basically and that other linebacker had Deshaun Watson in his hands and they just let Deshaun Watson slip by, you know, and lead Houston on to that overtime victory. But, I mean, this Buffalo Bills team, at least from a front seven standpoint, is really good. But what stands out the most about this defense is how good the secondary is. And this secondary is probably one of the more underrated secondaries or pretty much the most underrated secondary in the NFL. When we talk about some of the best secondaries in the NFL, we also talk about New England. We talk about Baltimore. We talk about Pittsburgh. But I think you need to put Buffalo in that mix as well. I mean, you got Maka Hyde. You got Jordan Poirier. I hope I pronounced his name right. Then you got your Davis White, who pretty much is one of the five best cornerbacks in the NFL as of right now. You also got Levi Wallace, Josh Norman. So, I mean, you got a lot of depth here in this secondary for the Buffalo Bills. So I think that the Buffalo Bills going into 2020, I'm really interested to see how far this team goes. Are they going to be able to finally knock off the New England Patriots? Because Sean McDermott, you know, has proved to be one of the better coaches in the NFL. But you know, what's going to determine if he is going to become a lead quarterback or a lead head coach, excuse me, is going to be can he finally be able to outcoach Bill Belichick and if the Buffalo Bills can finally get one up on the New England Patriots. Because I know it's easy to say that the Buffalo Bills are going to win the division because of how talented of a team they have. But, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how great of a team you have if you don't have a good coach. So, I mean, Sean McDermott, man, can he be able to outcoach Bill Belichick? That's what it's going to come down to because whether you guys want to admit it or not, this division is going to come down to the New England Patriots and the Buffalo Bills, which is why these Bills and Patriots games are going to be really fun to watch. And also, we got to talk about this Buffalo Bills offense. Um, this Buffalo Bills offense last season, you know, it wasn't nothing spectacular, you know. It wasn't explosive, but it got the job done. The offensive line has improved. You also bring in Stephon Diggs, who is the number one wide receiver that the Buffalo Bills have been looking for for some time now. Now you're going to pair him up with John Brown, which John Brown wasn't really that bad as number one wide receiver in Buffalo. He was pretty good, you know, considering the expectation that people have for him. I didn't really have any high expectations for John Brown. John Brown isn't a bad wide receiver at all, you know. So, I mean, John Brown and Stephon Diggs, I think that can be a pretty good duo. Now, Cole Beasley, you know, he's getting a little bit up there in age, but I do think that he's still one of the more reliable slot receivers in the NFL when it comes to moving the chains on third down. Then you also got Devin Motor Singletary. You got um Zach Moss. So I mean you got a pretty good group of halfbacks there. I think Buffalo is gonna want to pound the rock more this season, you know, then you know utilize play action with Josh Allen and throw the football downfield when need be. But this is a Buffalo Bills offense that is gonna be really good. Now so this offense is gonna be top ten. Ah uh, I don't really know about top 10. I mean, this Buffalo Bills offense could be top 10. It all depends on, you know, how well Josh Allen plays. But I think the Buffalo Bills offense is probably going to hover around, you know, middle of the pack in the NFL. Now, I know a lot of Buffalo Bills fans have been saying that, oh, we're going to have a top 5, top 10 offense. And, I know, you know, it's okay to be optimistic. But realistically, I think this is going to be a top 15 attack, you know. I don't really think the Buffalo Bills need to be anything flashy on offense. I just think they need to do what got them to the playoffs last season, which was run the football, you know, and, you know, run the football with Josh Allen as well and throwing the ball where it need be. So, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, 
I'm really excited to watch the Buffalo Bills this season. I like being right about things. I don't really like being wrong. And I'm really glad that the Buffalo Bills proved me right last season because I told a lot of people that the Buffalo Bills were not a team that you need to sleep on. A lot of people saying that uh, JT is just one game. It's a fluke. Every time I told the Buffalo Bills to win, a lot of people in the comment section for the opposing team kept on saying that uh, you're overrating the Buffalo Bills. And once again, the Buffalo Bills just kept on winning games and winning games and winning games. And I think I chose the the Buffalo Bills to win and a good majority of their games. I think I only chose them.